What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going over an interesting topic, the manual engine start in the Airbus aircraft. Now, a lot of you may be thinking that, oh, I manually start the engines all the time. I move the start switch to ignition start, turn the engine master on and it starts up. Yes, that is true, but actually what is happening is the FADIC or full authority digital electronic control computer for the engine is monitoring and successfully completing the engine start sequence for you automatically. What happens when that FADEC fails or what happens when there is a failure of that start sequence? We have to revert to a manual engine start, very similar to how most Boeing aircraft start their engines to this day. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get this aircraft pushed back, ready to go, and we're going to go over the manual engine start procedure in the Airbus aircraft. All right, now that we've pushed back from the gate and we're ready to start the aircraft, let's quickly go over when and why you would have to do a manual engine start in the Airbus aircraft. Most common, you're gonna get a failed automatic start. So for those that are unaware, what happens is when you move the engine start switch to ignition start and engage one of the engine masters, the FADIC is the full authority digital electronic control computer is in charge of the whole startup procedure. If there happens to be a failure, there's several failures outlined in the Airbus FCOM that can occur where the Airbus will actually abort the engine start and begin a dry cranking procedure to clear the start fault. What is a dry crank? Basically, it runs a starter motor to get rid of any unburnt fuel, also cools down the internal temp just a little bit. After the dry crank procedure has been completed, which will be automatic, the aircraft is now waiting for a manual engine start. There is one exception to the rule where you cannot do a manual engine start after a failed automatic start, and that would be a failure of ignition A and B, which if you think about it makes sense because if you don't have igniters, why would you even want to try a manual start? Other failures that happen during the automatic start, such as maybe a hot start or a hung start, they can be due to lack of sufficient bleed pressure, perhaps strong tailwinds coming up the tailpipe, high density altitude, high temperature causing an ITT and not enough pressure to get that engine to start going flowing in the correct direction. Assuming that we've had an automatic engine start failure, right now we're gonna go through the manual engine start procedure. To conduct a manual engine start, we're gonna move the ignition start switch to ignition start. We're gonna move it back to the normal position, back to the ignition start switch position again. What this will do is it will allow both igniters to ignite during the ignition process instead of just channel A or channel B, which will be indicated here on your lower ECAM. A quick note, the reason why I move the ignition start switch to ignition start back to normal in the sim is because this is, again, remember, simulating a failed automatic start. So what would happen is you'd already move the ignition start switch to ignition start. You commence the auto start. It would fail. So then you would do a manual start, which then you would move it back to normal and then back to ignition start again. Now, for sim purposes, we just have to do it twice successively so we can kind of simulate having already moved that ignition start switch to the ignition start procedure for the failed automatic start. It'd be cool to see TOLUS eventually implement perhaps a failed automatic start in one of their failure scenarios, perhaps on the time or age of aircraft selection on the ISCS, maybe the older the aircraft, the less bleed pressure and the chances of a failed auto start, which would then force us to actually use this procedure in the sim more frequently. Now, again, I've only done this maybe a handful of times in the real world, but it would still be cool to see implemented at some point in the X-Plane platform. After the ignition start switch is in the ignition start position, I'll pop this up so we can watch it, we're gonna come to the overhead and we're going to select the engine man start push button. Now, a quick note about this switch here. As soon as you press the manual start push button, what is happening is you're going to be opening the bleed valve, allowing air to run to the starter and get the engine spooling. Fuel will not be introduced until you move the ignition master to on. However, once you press this switch, you should observe the spool up and the starter will begin to turn. We'll start the timer. You can see that the bleed pressure is being supplied to the engine. We have our N2 is spinning up. We're looking for a minimum of 18% N2 and also a minimum of 30 seconds. Once that is complete, we will then introduce fuel 
the master engine start switch. There's 30 seconds. We have a good avail indication. At that point, we can select the ignition mode switch to normal, come back to our overhead, turn off the man start push button, and close the guard. So there you have a manual engine start in the Airbus aircraft. Now again, let's watch the procedure in real time without me interrupting. Ignition switch to ignition start. Verify we have bleed pressure. Normal ignition start. Engine two man start push button on. Start the clock. Minimum 18% N2. Check. Waiting for our 30 seconds. You can see the engine is just motoring here. 30 seconds, introduce fuel. Observe light off. Now on the real aircraft, it is important to manually guard the engine start master during a manual engine start because if there should be another failure such as a hot start or a fail to ignite, there is no automatic abort during the manual engine start process. All right, looks like we have two good starts. Back to normal, back to the overhead. Man start push button off, close the guard. And you have now started up both engines manually in the Airbus aircraft. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video on how to do the manual engine start, AKA the old school Boeing way to get your aircraft up and running when you have a failed automatic start, or maybe you just want to simulate doing a manual engine start for fun and practice purposes. If you guys like this content, go ahead and hit the like button for me, subscribe to the channel. I'll talk to you again here real soon. See ya!